Welcome to today's new episode of Sam the Builder, or should I call it Semit the Builder? You know what, you guys decide in the comment section, but I have about $600 worth of supplies here. We're gonna be tackling the floors ourselves. After a little bit of thinking, brainstorming, talking to friends and stuff like that, I think we're just gonna do it ourselves. I think it makes way more sense and it'll be fun and I'm sure you guys will enjoy the content. So let me show you everything we've got here. By the way, this is like my third home center I've been to today. And I finally found one. It's not too far from the shop actually. This is like a huge one and it has everything I need. Literally, I can get all the floor, uh, concrete paint here. I got the concrete prep. I got the thinners. Uh, it's all water-based though as well. Um, I also found some containers of self leveling cement which we're going to use to repair a lot of the holes and stuff that are there it's not much but it's all they had so we can at least get started on that today but yeah let's get to the shop and get started well here is my 600 hundred dollar bill for uh everything we got today definitely doesn't feel like there's 600 dollars there but trust me there is there's a lot of paint just going to load everything into my tradie vehicle here um top of the line all the tradies around here use them you know um yeah okay we're gonna have to shuffle stuff around and probably put some stuff on the front seat but we are ready to roll. I suspect we're going to end up spending a bit more money on like some other supplies like primers and things like that. Uh, they didn't have uh, the exact amount that I needed. So I have enough to get started and the majority of the job done. Um, we'll just have to come back probably next week and pick up the rest. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I think everything for us to do the floors is probably going to cost me... Under a thousand dollars. Will this pole fit in here like this? No, okay. It's not the tradie vehicle I thought it was. Damn it. Salesman conned me. All right. Put that in there. We'll be good. Can't even fit $600 of like floor painting supplies in my Skyline, man. Why did I buy this thing? Oh, that's right. So I could be part of JDM space. Ugh! I didn't even care, man. I'm just gonna throw all this in here and hope it doesn't explode. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shuffle stuff around. This is hard doing one-handed. Made it to the shop, already got the heater on, went to Matsuya, got myself some dinner. I'm gonna eat this, enjoy some Netflix, and then uh, we're gonna get started on this floor. I'm hoping that tonight I'll have all the concrete, like little holes and all the damage in it, like the big stuff all repaired and ready so that tomorrow I can start laying down primer. I may actually in that corner over there, um, put a bit of primer down and just test to see what it dries like and looks like in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty pumped because if everything goes well, by the end of the weekend, we could have all these floors painted and ready to roll. It's time to get started. And the first thing I'm gonna do, look at my little Japanese concrete trail thing, <laughs> um, is I'm gonna use this stuff, which is like self-leveling kind of hole repair for concrete. Um, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just mix it with water. And then what I'm gonna do is pour it into all uh, the big ones like this. It's hard to really tell how bad that is. Oh, that kind of gives you a good idea. So I'm gonna pour it into those kinds of things to help fill them in. Um, and pretty much just the really big ones, I'm gonna use the, the big concrete, like the real concrete I have. There's a few really big deep ones over there. But for all the stuff where it's like, uh, just like that, and uh, other little places up here where it's pretty bad along this line here. I'm gonna use that self-leveling stuff. It's really like, it's not super bad. It's just that could cause a bit of a problem like if we're pushing an engine crane and that kind of stuff. So I just wanna try and hopefully it's like, this is really rough. So it should stick to it really well and I scrubbed it and everything really well. This is gonna need a lot. Like, look at this. This is, this is kind of hard to see, but yeah, that's all gonna get filled in. It should look much better when we're done. Um, but yeah, all the really like deep kind of big holes, just like things like this. There's a lot of these everywhere. I'll fill with just normal concrete. Anyways, I'm going to get started on this, start pouring and, uh, yeah, build a Sam, Sam the builder, getting stuff done. So this stuff is great. Um, it's a little bit hard to work with. Like you can't really move it around. You just got to let it do its thing. Um, I did kind of spread it around with a piece of wood, but like it's already pretty much dry which is mind blowing. I like literally put it on the ground like 10 minutes ago. Um, it's kind of like the, I don't know how to, what the name is for it, but there's that weird kind of liquid where if you suddenly like move it, it turns into a solid object. And then if it lets it sit, it just kind of falls apart and, and turns into like liquid. That, that, um, that stuff that's like a liquid, but a solid. You, you probably know the official name for it. I can't remember. Please remind me in the comments, but it's kind of like that. It's really, really cool. Um, so this is all done. Um, I actually started mixing up the concrete and realized I bought the wrong concrete. Um, 
I needed the fine sand based one and um, somehow, I don't know, I got my kanji or something mixed up and this bag has all the really big rocks in it so I can't actually smooth it out into the small spaces and stuff. I need more of like a, kind of like a grout and mortar kind of based one but a little bit more stronger cement if that makes sense. Um, so I figured I'm gonna just mix this batch up and I'm gonna fill that huge pothole out in the street with. I've actually already kind of got a whole bunch in there so let's go pour it in the pothole. Right now, might as well. Look at me, honest guy Samet, fixing potholes for the Japanese uh, government council, whatever it's called. It's a big pothole. I may actually use the whole bag on this thing. Look at this sucker. Oh, we got light, yes. Okay, yeah, there is no way this little amount of concrete is gonna fill that, but hey, it's a start. Let's put something in there. Hey, can you turn on again for me, please? Hello, there we go. Yeah, it's a start, it's a big hole. Um, I'll just put in the whole bag and hopefully uh, it'll make it a bit better. <laughs> Quickly duck down the road to the Royal Home Center, I think this is called, yeah, Royal Home Center. And they've got exactly the concrete I need. So uh, I grabbed a bag of the regular concrete because since I started filling the pothole, I think I'm just gonna finish filling the pothole. I can't start a job and just leave it half ass done. So I grabbed a bag of regular concrete too, fast drying stuff, so we'll fill that pothole and then that thing will be a thing of the past because that is a deep boy pothole. That thing's gonna wreck some aero from some friends' cars or my cars in the future for sure if we don't fix that. So why not? So call me crazy, but I'm not sure if concrete was this cheap in Australia. These two bags, like each bag was 500 yen, like not even f like like f not even five dollars USD for a bag of 25 kilos. I swear it used to be way more expensive in Australia for a bag of concrete. Maybe I just can't remember right, but anyways. Uh, that's pre-mixed stuff too, so all I gotta do is add water. Um, back into the tradey car, all the concrete goes, this thing's gonna... <laughs> Luckily this whole thing's getting rebuilt and painted and stuff, so it's gonna really look like a tradies car. I was super, like, uh, paranoid that one of the big, uh, like, 20 kilo drums of paint was gonna split open in the back and just destroy everything. But anyways, I'm gonna carry these, these big boys. Let's see if we can do it one-handed for the vlog. For the vlog! Ugh, okay, I'm gonna break an arm. Yeah, I'm gonna hurt a wrist. We're not gonna do that. Let's just... <laughs> I'm a wreck. I'm just gonna put this in the car and pick it up at the shop. So I just finished uh, leveling out that big section there. And uh, pretty much now what I'm gonna do is work on these big gouges up at this end here. I'm gonna get these all done. This is probably the biggest one here. There's some more really big ones here. You can see I put a little bit in there already. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep working on it. What I'm doing is uh, I'm dropping the cement and I'm leveling it out with the piece of wood. Then I go over the top with just a tiny bit of water and the trowel to uh, smooth it out a bit, make it look nicer. Um, I do have a bit of boncrete mixed in with that as well, so that should help it bond to the concrete a bit better. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. These are probably the biggest, like the worst ones here. Like, see how long this gouge goes all the way through here. So I'm just gonna quickly fix that up. I hope that in the three, three years or five years that I'm here for, that it won't lift, lift up. Um, but uh, obviously that is a risk we're taking. If it does lift up, I'll just pull it out and I'll put some paint in there. It's not a big deal. I just figured since uh, I'm about to paint the floors, we might as well start out and try to do the best job we can. Um, but yeah, a lot of these things, like a few cracks and stuff, like big cracks, I'm not gonna worry about and touch. The paint will just kind of fill that in. And I mean, who really cares about a couple little cracks like this here and stuff? That's not gonna affect me and what I wanna do here. Geez, that is actually pretty big. Comes all the way through there. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, it's a workshop at the end of the day, so I don't need to go all out, but just the really big stuff. It's like if we're pushing a cart or like an engine hoist with an engine hanging off it, you know, if it catches on something as big as this, that can actually like off uh, balance the whole thing. So we want to try and uh, make it a little bit better if we can. So I'm going to put the camera down, time lapse this. Going to do this whole section here and uh, give you guys an update once we've kind of finished everything, I guess. Just finished this huge gouge here. It's crazy, I did not realize how deep and how big it was and how much concrete it was gonna take. There's still a little bit there to do, 
but I've already emptied this bucket. It was about half full of concrete, so it's kind of crazy just how insane this is. This one's gonna be probably worse. It's uh, a lot deeper, and it goes all the way to here. Um, but uh, we got, hopefully there's, I think there'll be enough in that bag to get all the big ones done today. Um, and then uh, hopefully, um, I need to look up how long we need to let this thing cure and dry for, but I'm hoping tomorrow I can start laying down the primer. Um, if not, at least we could start in like this corner where there's no holes and stuff like that and get the ball rolling so that we can kind of have this corner primed and painted before the rest of it. But it would obviously be ideal if we could get it all done in one hit. But uh, we've got a fair bit of stuff in here now that I have to shuffle and move around. So we'll probably have to do it in sections and wait for one to dry to then put this stuff on and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep chipping away, mix up another batch, get stuck into it. But we'll definitely have this done tonight. I'm, I'm excited. Jeez, look at that. Huge amount done. So we've already done that. And now this section here, and you can really see that, that this is the same concrete that I used there. And then this is the uh, little container of... Um, like self-leveling concrete that I found and that's like pretty much almost dry. It looks kind of like ready to walk on. Don't know if I will though. Anyways, let's get back to it. I am finished. You can kind of see like the floors are really patchy and stuff from all the wet cement drying and all the holes that I found, like the big ones are patched up too. Looking pretty good right about now. A lot of the stuff like it's been drying pretty quickly, which is great. Um, it's actually kind of insane how much concrete I used filling all these holes. Um, this is a fine sand one. There's like not even a kilo left in that if you can see that. Like that's a full 25 kilo bag. All pretty much used on filling this in. That's crazy. I did not realize like there was so many gouges and holes in this concrete. And I only filled in the bad ones. Like any little gouges I just kind of left. Like, you know, ones like these ones here I just left because uh, those won't kind of bother me. It was just the really deep ones I wanted to fix. So hopefully uh, this will be dry. Like, look how quickly this one's drying. That's actually kind of nice. Um, hopefully these will all be kind of dry and okay for me to primer on tomorrow. Um, I will do some research and just double check. Um, we obviously, I'm going to vacuum the floors one more time too and just try to like pick up any dirt and little like sand and rocks and stuff that are left here from obviously the concrete and whatnot and me going around trying to fix it all. Um, I also filled in that pothole. I used a full 25 kilo bag of the fast drying cement. Let me, let's go for a walk. Let me show you. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, the the, the the 25 kilo bag was only like $4.80 or something. So it wasn't that bad. It's super dark out here. Wait till this light turns on. There you go. I got that cone there and everything. Look, fully patched in. Yeet, yeet. No more big pothole. <laughs> oh man, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I'm pretty much just, I, I'm pretty much like, I was talking to my dad about it and he was like, Sam, what you got to realize is you're just making it better for the next person. <laughs> I'm like, ah, it's so true. Because honestly, it, I could probably outgrow this space within the three year lease that we have here. So I think that's pretty uh, adamant that we will probably grow out of it very quickly. But concreting is done. Oh, there goes a the car. Hopefully he avoids my fresh pothole. Pay attention to the cone, buddy. You don't want concrete all over your Jeep. Yeah, okay, he did. <laughs> um, yeah, concreting's done. Um, I'm gonna muck around with a bit of primer in this corner and just see what it does to the concrete. Um, and uh, I just wanna see if it's gonna, uh, like I'm just gonna do like probably a one meter by one meter square and just see how it dries and what it looks like in the morning. Um, and then uh, uh, that's kinda gonna be my test square to make sure that I've got all the right stuff. Um, this is the primer here. Stuff I put down on concrete first. Once I've done that, then a couple coats of this one. I went for American gray for the um, floor concrete. So, and each one of these does about 60 meters square, 40 to 60. I'm probably gonna need one more drum of those in the end, by the end of it, because this is like 145 square meters roughly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hyped. Uh, time to kind of sweep that corner, put some primer down and uh, see what we're dealing with. So this stuff looks super weird and gross. <laughs> I'll let you guys use your imagination, but it's, uh, it's really, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess it's kind of like a sealer and it makes like the surface really sticky. Um, 
this is this is pretty weird. Damn, that thing absorbed it like right away. So I'm just gonna do like a one by one meter square. I swept this before, obviously. And I'm not gonna go up to. Ooh, I'm not gonna go up to the wall because I haven't taped anything yet. But just want to see what this does. I think this is like a. I don't know. It's like super tacky and. Ooh, look how much it's foaming. This is kind of like just my test to make sure that tomorrow I'll put some, uh, after this dries, I'll put some of the floor paint on it too. And we'll make sure that like this corner is like looking good and doing everything I want it to before we do the entire floor. Cause like if I go to then put the paint on this and this is the wrong kind of like uh, primer for concrete and like the paint doesn't stick to it, then uh, obviously we've only done a little square and not the entire floor. I'm just being super cautious because like even though like I asked the people in the home center to help me and they gave me all the information um, obviously I couldn't really triple check myself because I cannot read kanji all right I think that's kind of pretty good geez there's still a fair bit of dirt on the floor shoulder night can't do much about it this feels so weird doing left-handed I think we're good here. Still a lot in this brush though. Luckily they're so cheap those. All right, well, let's leave that there. Primer has been placed. I don't even know if it's really called primer. Probably like a sealer. Cool. All right, well, that's my test square. Now I gotta clean this all out. <laughs> I have, um, I think like thinner, this is like thinner for the floor paint. I think I can use this for cleaning it too. So I'll just clean that real quick, but let that set. Uh, actually, how long does it say it takes for this primer stuff to set? Um, oops, spilled a bit there. Just spread that out so it's not like a big clump of it. It kind of looks like resin, but it's not. It's like a sealer. How long does it say it dries? Da -da -da, two to three hours. Okay, not too bad then. So uh, yeah, I'll come back tomorrow morning and we'll see what this spot looks like. Hopefully uh, it's pretty good, man. If like, you could almost just leave it like that. Kind of looks like Boncrete, like the kind of milky kind of weird stuff that I put in the concrete. But anyways, uh, build the Sam. We got a lot done, jammed out to some music, filled in a bunch of holes, concreted everything. All in all, like for not using self-leveling concrete, it looks pretty good, I'm not gonna say. Oh, I did in this corner too, because it was like really big uh, crack there and uh, it was like going down. So I figured it'd be just nice to fill that in. But yeah, we're looking at my handiwork now. I'm pretty, pretty proud of myself. It's gonna look so much better, obviously, when it's painted. I just really hope that none of it kind of lifts up in the time that I'm here. I know it will, because obviously it's not like, it's not really a good solution. Really what you're supposed to do is like lay a full new surface down of that self-leveling stuff but uh, that's at least like five mil thick. But, uh, and then you then do other layers of resin and things like that. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I've been talking a lot, so let's uh, turn the camera off. I'm gonna chill in front of the heater for a bit and then uh, we'll go from there. I'm around the corner from my shop at the local vending machine and this is a monster one. Look at all, oh man, this is so dangerous. Yikes, but I'm also super hyped because corn soup and apple tea this stuff is so good like super refreshing and i'm definitely i've got a bit of a headache from all the uh the thinner uh fumes so <laughs> trying to stay outside also there's something happening with the police next door i don't know what's going on but uh oh i want to get some of that corn soup too dropping my money everywhere what is it 110 dude this vending machine's kind of cheap too give me that hot corn soup Love it. All right, let's get back to the shop. And we'll do an ASMR. Have we done ASMR coffee today? Did we? No, we haven't. ASMR corn soup time. That's what we're doing. So while I sit here and literally watch cement dry, uh, <laughs> let's get our hot corn soup ASMR out of the way. Um, and this is why I got this particular heater because the, the top of it is always hot, right? Look, a bug died there. That's funny. He landed on there and got burnt to death. 
Um, but the best thing about this is I can just get like a box of these coffees or corn soup from the supermarket and whenever I want them heated up, you just sit them on top and after about five minutes, they're proper hot and like ready to go. So ASMR coffee time boys. I'd open it up there, but I'm gonna burn my hand if I have it up there. So, oh, shake it first. Always shake your soup, please. Let's go. Oh yeah. Mm. So good. Shout out if you guys have been to Japan and had one of these, they're amazing. I just realized that I haven't exactly filled you guys in yet on everything that happened with the guy that came out uh, and gave me a quote on fixing the floors. Um, what actually happened was he came, he looked at it, and he told me he wanted 10 grand. <laughs> um, that's a lot of money <laughs> to paint floors. Um, I, I don't know if it was just because he was trying to take advantage of me, maybe because uh, I'm a foreigner obviously here, which I hear is kind of a, a pretty common thing amongst the tradies. Um, or if he, maybe he just didn't want to do the job, um, which is a common tactic, just quote super high and then it's actually worth your while to actually do something you don't want to do. Um, but yeah, he was saying that like, he was gonna have to put a fresh layer of concrete down across the entire floor, and then he was going to do another three different layers of certain resins and stuff. Like, um, it wasn't it wasn't epoxy either. It was it, I don't know. It was weird. Um, but he wanted ten grand, and then uh, actually called up my friend Alnosan. If you guys remember him, he used to drive with us at Okajuku. He had a black um, G35 Skyline and it um, had a lot of monster logos on it. Anyways, he actually rolled his car at Nico Circuit and ever since then, he's been working really hard to pay off uh, what was left on that car and stuff. And then uh, he saved up a bunch of money, bought an S14, did an S15 front end swap on it, and he's gonna be driving with us at Okajuku next year. So it's taken him two years to kind of recover from rolling that car, uh, which further proves my point. I've spoken about this before, but don't drift cars that you uh, owe money on. It's not a good idea. <laughs> case example right there. Um, but yeah, anyways, that aside, um, he does this kind of concreting floor stuff. He's just like really far on the other side, like in Chiba. Um, so it's kind of rare that he'd ever be around here in this area. But I called him and got some advice and asked him how much he would quote to do this kind of thing. And he was like, oh, like three, three, three grand. Worst case scenario, if it's like super bad and we have to, you know, do a full layer of concrete on everything, it would be probably four to five grand. And I was just like mind blown at the price difference. Like that's his business, that's what he does. And he was saying that he'd also do like a top layer really thick of clear epoxy for me too. So like that's using proper epoxy. So I was just like, man, that is crazy. And I spoke to him for a bit and then I spoke to Okachan and, and he was like, dude, like every normal other workshop in Japan, they just use this floor paint that you get from the home center. And Okachan gave me some advice when he did his, and his has lasted for like 12 years. There's a few places where it's chipped up because like heavy stuff has dropped, but he just paints it again and it's done, fixed. Um, apparently this floor paint is like really, really good. And uh, normally everyone in Japan uses green paint. I don't know why. Um, I think that's just a Japanese thing. Um, but yeah, I decided to go with the American gray. And yeah, that's what I decided to do. I just was just like, man, like all the supplies, probably gonna end up spending about seven, $800 and I've done everything myself and I'm gonna feel super accomplished. Also, you're probably wondering, Sam, where'd you get this beanie hoodie? Um, this is some sample stuff that I got made for the winter drop that's coming probably either around Christmas or just after. Um, the beanies, these will be available. There's gonna be only a small amount of these. These will be really cool. We'll probably restock them, but I don't know. So keep an eye out for all the drop info when it comes. These beanies I love. I'm never normally a beanie guy, but uh, I don't know, something changed. So uh, I dig these, these are super cool if you look at them. Um, this, uh, a few changes are happening to this. The sleeves are finalized and dope. I love them. They look awesome. Uh, this is going to just have no white um, outline around it. So it's gonna like not kind of stick out like a sore thumb like it does. And the quality of these hoodies is amazing. The sizing is spot on too. Um, I went with a 60% cotton, 40% polyester blend. So that way it's kind of thick and it also doesn't like shrink so much when it's washed. Um, all my shirts are 100% cotton um, and they're like perfect. I got those like 
100% perfect. I'm very happy with how those feel and the quality of those. And these hoodies are going to be amazing too. I think you guys are going to love them. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for the winter drop. There's also some other cool products coming. But this is just kind of a sample. I look kind of like semited out right now. Like logos everywhere in pink. But I really like it. Um, and yeah, I'm just... Oh man, so much cool stuff is happening. Hopefully tomorrow I can start laying down the paint and primer. I'm, I'm pumped. Gonna get Jeff out here to help me and we may even be able to, if we get the primer done early in the morning, um, it all depends on if this concrete dries. I probably should wait 48 hours, um, but I'm gonna just do some research and see if uh, we really need to wait that long. But, um, oh, we, can, we need to do at least half of the shop. And I think, uh, I think like this half we'll do first. Yeah, because there's no concreting on this side. So we'll do this half first, so that then when this is painted and dried, we can move all this stuff back over here when we're doing the rest of the shop. So I think that's the best way to do it. And then that way we can let that concrete, because all the concreting's on that side. So we can wait the full 48 hours and let that dry and set. A lot of talking, I know, but uh, this is what's happening right now. I'm literally in this empty shop by myself, just working practically every day. Also, sorry for skipping an upload the other day. Things didn't go according to plan there. And um, yeah, well, yeah. Let's get to it. No, boys, I spilled my corn soup. That looks so gross. <laughs> well, a late night. I think this is like my first late night at the shop. It's almost midnight right now, but uh, we're all done. I actually found some places I missed. So I used the last of the uh, self-leveling cement and uh, did a whole bunch of those and kind of touched up some other places. But uh, we're good now, time to head home. Probably the first of many late nights, that's for sure. Ooh, it's just creepy out here, really dark. Need to get like a little outside light, sensor light or something. So when I'm locking this up, I can see what's happening. All right, I'll pick it up once we get home. Back home now and I cannot wait for tomorrow because if everything goes according to plan, we should be able to paint at least half of the workshop um, and then the following day, the other half. I am hyped. I cannot wait to see what the floors are gonna look like. It's it's gonna be good. Um, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Uh, once again, sorry for more floor content, but oh, floor gang. Um, and we're gonna make the sickest JDM space. But anyways, that aside guys, smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe. And I will see you all in tomorrow's vlog with some paint. Peace out, Jamata.